Hello, my friends, and welcome to Metro TV. I'm your host, Andy Hoig, publisher, CEO of Metro Magazine and Midlands Business Journal. I'm talking to two amazing nonprofits today, Partnership for Kids and Dream Weaver Foundation. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Well, hello, my friends. I am here with Deb Denbeck. She is the president and CEO of Partnership for Kids, an amazing organization. Deb, thank you so much for joining me. Well, thanks for asking. It's great to be here, Andy. Um, there's, a, there's a few things that are coming up um, soon this fall, but Partnership for Kids, let's just talk about that, the organization as a whole. It does so much for so many youth in the community. So let, just take it away. Partnership for Kids, what is it? So we're a youth serving organization um, that works with 3,100 students from the beginning of their academic career through the end. So starting at pre-K, going all the way to and through their um, post-secondary education, whatever means that might be. So we have different programs at every level. We have a, a, a reading um, program in the early elementary grades we start to work on goal um, setting. Two things that we work on in elementary really is, is reading and attendance in school. Uh, those are the two largest measures for if a student's gonna graduate from high school. So wanna get that early because um, if you can't read, it's hard to do a lot of things. Um, and we want these kiddos in school. In, and that's a during the day program. So we have volunteers coming into the schools from a lot of corporations just helping these young people um, really understand their reading to them and helping them set goals. Um, really a great time to really start to develop that futuristic mindset for young people. From those six elementary schools feed into our five middle schools and that's an after school program. And we always say in middle school, this is where rubber hits the road um, yeah. because this is a critical time for kids. And the one thing that we know is if one thing goes wrong in their life, they look to drop out of school. Yeah. So we've really got to keep them engaged. Um, we work on their strengths. Um, we're working on college tours. We're working on career exploration. We're working on community service. We're trying to build that all around person and really help them develop. And then as they go into high school, um, the curriculum gets a little deeper. And so now we're starting to hone in on you, do you like the trades better? Do you, are you looking at being a, maybe a doctor, a lawyer, a nurse, or something in the health fields? Um, so then we start to do job shadowing with these young people. We're starting to do interviews, um, resume writing, getting them ready. And then as our junior and senior year, we're really preparing them for what's next after high school graduation. Yeah. And the real key is to get them to graduate from high school. And 98% of our young people graduate on time um, in high school, even during the pandemic, they did that. So we were really proud of them. And then we help them with our post-secondary expenses. Um, and we do programming in, in um, post-secondary as well. We are on both the Metro and the UNL campus and a lot of the area campuses as well. Um, but really giving them that guidance and programming that's going to get them to their the finish line. Sure. Well, I'm I'm gonna I'm just gonna backtrack just for a second. So <laughs> when you talk about um, the younger younger children, one of the ways people because I want to kind of take people through yep. how they can help in these different stages. So um, the young kids, you have a reading program that people can sign up for, um, or the mentors, or you know, correct. So come be a so come be a book buddy. Or come yeah. be a goal buddy. Um, and you're in the classroom working with kids. Um, book buddies read and then um, to each of the kid to all the kiddos. And then they all get to take the new book home and build their own home libraries. Oh my so, God. so that's that's incredible programming. Then in the middle school, we're looking for career coaches. We're looking for mentors that want to come in and actually be formally matched with kids okay. so they can do events after um, outside of the school, same in the high school. 
Um, but we're looking for that career expertise too, that people say, you know what, I'd love to come in and, and talk about a series of what engineers do. Yeah. Um, you know, help them understand what's out there. Um, because this is the time when kids need that help of really give me an idea what's out there. Oh my gosh, I didn't know I could do that. Right. And it's kind of finding what, you know, potentially what they're passionate about and what, and uh, I mean, a career and what they go into. I mean, that's going to be a major part of every person's life as you move forward and, and having somebody to talk to and give them information about that um, is so important. Oh, it's, it's so incredible, Andy. And, and all the research will tell you, I mean, you and I both know that we've had mentors in our lives. We still have mentors in our lives. What a difference those people make. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you're not a parent. Uh, you're not a friend. You're, you're a mentor. You're there to give advice and to help guide. Um, yeah. But you really do make a difference in these young people's lives. But the programming as well um, changes lives. And we're just ecstatic about what our program's doing. So and we're so grateful to be back in the schools. You know, we're having to learn just like all the kids. We've been out of the schools for 18 months. So now our staff is just going back in. We've done everything virtually, which um, was great. We learned a lot, but you know, we know our best work is when we're in person. Yeah, when, when you're able to have that, that yeah, in-person contact. And I know um, that this is something, and maybe this is past the mark, but at some point during the summer, you're like creating like laundry baskets of, of stuff for kids going to college. So we just delivered all of those. Okay, all right, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. so excited. And you know, what a big help that was. Um, we just had a lot of people step up and help us with that program. And we're just so thankful to everybody that pitched in to help. When do you start that program? Because I want people who are listening, maybe to mark it on their calendars for next year. When do you start that program? And what does that program entail? So each basket's $150. You can sponsor a basket. And it really gives all of the immediate needs that kids have. Um, a laundry basket, obviously, laundry soap, um, regular soap, shampoo, um, sheets, towels. It's kind of the necessity to start college. Yeah. Um, and it's $150. And then the rest of the money goes to help support the programming that we give these students. Um, and we're, like I said, we are in contact with our college students um, most every month and quite a few times during the week. So right. with our offices at UNO and Metro, where the most of our kids are at. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about some events that are coming up. Um, I love both of these events, but the first one coming up on September 19th. Um, a part of the Omaha Marathon um, Partnership for Kids is the charity um, associated with that. And it's a 5k, 10k, half marathon and full marathon. And a mile. So you oh, can and a mile. Okay. So there's okay. a race for everybody. And, and one of our signature sponsors this year is CHI health. So we're really excited to have them on board for this. We have a new venue this year. It's going to start and end at the capital district. Okay. Um, so, um, you'll be sent off in, in great, on these great runs. But then as you come in, the shenanigans is going to be playing there. Um, the restaurants and bars will be open. So it's going to be more of a festival style. Um, we're really excited about this. Um, the Capital District has just been amazing. And so we're really excited to also bring them on as a new partner this year. Yeah. And we're the official charity. So the 5K run is our run. Yes. Yeah. Which I will be participating in that, the 5K run. Um, where can people go to register? So you can go to omahamarathon.org okay. and you can register for all five races right there. Um, if you can't find that website, um, they can go to p4k.org and, and we can help them as well. Um, but we're excited. And we ran this race very safely, even during uh, the heights of COVID last year. Um, so it's very safe. Um, it's well run. 
And uh, the city of Omaha just does a great job of helping us. Yeah, wonderful. I'm just going to personally invite anybody who wants to come down. I will be doing the 5K. And if you don't know anybody, I will be there and you can, we can walk together, jog together. I'm, I'm more of a walker and a jogger right now. So you don't need to be running this. It's just a great way to support partnership for kids and move your body. You know, that's yeah. just, it's, it's a great way to do that. So I, you know, and that's why CHI has really come on. It's a great yeah. wellness um, for companies and for everybody. We're just really excited to have them as our major sponsor. Yeah. this year. Okay. Event number two, hops for grapes. Yep. Hop, hop, hops, hops and grapes. Yeah. Festival. I've been to it several times. I, I love it. So that is October 1st. Yep. So it's going to be at the downtown Hilton, uh, 7 to 10. Uh, tickets are $100. Uh, you can go onto our website and, and, and grab a ticket. The greatest thing about this is you can taste brews, you can taste spirits, you can taste ciders, coffees. Um, and then we're bringing on some great uh, Napa and Washington wines. We're pairing it with foods. Uh, we have games going on. We have uh, prizes. We have the shenanigans again are playing. Uh, we have a live auction and silent auction. And, and those are going to be experiences. Yeah. So we know that everybody goes to auctions and like, oh, do I need to take anything else home? These are going to be really fun experiences. So you don't want to miss this. But it's casual. Um, come in jeans. Um, but just have a great time. Um, we're very fortunate that um, HDR will serve as our signature sponsor. And our chairs are also coming from HDR. Uh, just a great new couple and, to Omaha. And we're just really excited. And it's just a fun, fun event. It, it is a fun event. And again, you know, like you said, it's casual. You don't need to get dressed up. You know, you just, you know, come as stylish and casual as you want to. And and that's great. So it's not your typical chicken dinner. No, no, it certainly is not. So anyway, I just want to make sure that we've kind of covered everything because we're, we're running out of time here. I know people, uh, we talked about how they can volunteer, how they can donate, but again, go to um, partnership, what um, p4k.org is the yep. website and um, lots of information there. Um, and Andy, we need volunteers. Um, yeah. COVID last year, we had to cut down our volunteers and they had to go virtual. So now being back in the school, these kiddos need everybody's help. And so please give an hour or two of your time um, and you'll enjoy it. And you'll know that you've really made a difference in the lives of a young person. Yeah, absolutely. Deb, thank you so much for what you and this organization does for our community. I just, I'm, I'm so grateful. What a contribution. Thank you. Um, we're there together. We can all change a lot of lives. Absolutely. And folks, we will be right back. Well, welcome, my friends. I'm here with Sherry Masty. She is the executive director of the Dream Weaver Foundation and Josh Brink, the director of development. Um, I'm so excited to have you both on the show today. Thank you so much for having us. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, the Dream Weaver Foundation does so much for so many. So Sherry, do you want to start off and just tell us what the foundation, I mean, what this nonprofit organization is all about? Yeah. So Dream River Foundation is a local nonprofit. We fulfill dreams for seniors with terminal illnesses. Um, we do that really through, by creating memorable experiences, ones that friends and families and the dreamer themselves will never forget. We were founded in 2012 by Ron and Jeannie Carson. Uh, so we're really kind of approaching our ninth year of fulfilling dreams right here in the greater Omaha area. 
Um, last year, even you know, through a crazy year, we were still able to serve over 2,000 seniors. Uh, mm -hmm. So we are growing and we are you know, kind of on a ramp up and we're doing what we can to serve as many seniors as possible within our community. Um, let me ask you a, a couple questions. So what are some of the dreams like you have an event coming up and we're going to talk about that, but what are, yeah, some, of the, yeah. what are some of the dreams that, um, that you fulfilled? So we have a multiple different dreams. Um, they were um, from huge dreams where they get to go on these tr huge travel experiences that they will never forget. Yeah. And they go to as simple as they just want to have a nice family picnic. Um, we just sent a couple of dreamers to the only adult, only all-inclusive resort in Key Largo, Florida. Um, mm -hmm. They never got to have their honeymoon after about 47 years of marriage. So oh my goodness. we got to create the first honeymoon experience for them, which was amazing to see all their hilarious pictures uh, and the right. joy in their eyes when they got home. Not only have they never been on a honeymoon, they had never traveled outside of the city of Omaha. So this was quite an adventure to send the two of them on and they enjoyed the trip. They got to enjoy each other and kind of reconnect. Um, they've served the community of Nebraska for over nine, 29 years you, uh, with foster care. So it was really awesome getting to do something for them. And so. I think even today we have a country concert going on at a local nursing home. Someone wanted to bring a country artist or guy that sings country music to have a little concert for all of her friends, his friends, actually, sorry, um, at their nursing home. Yeah. So what is the, what is like the age group? So tell me, you know, with the Dream Weaver Foundation, what's the age group that you, that you serve? We serve individuals that are 55 years of age or older, are suffering from a chronic or terminal diagnosis, and then are also living in low income. So those are basically the three qualifications that we have. So if you meet those, we can serve you. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions that are maybe off topic of, of what I, you know, of our, of our list. Um, like what's the most amazing dream that you have fulfilled? There, I, it's hard. I'm sorry. <laughs> to narrow it down to one. Um, for me, one of my most amazing dreams, I think, will always be the first dream I fulfilled five years ago, um, and it was with Coach Jim Bailey from here in Omaha, and we were able to send him to the Baseball Hall of Fame. So he he grew up at Rosenblatt Stadium, stadium shagging balls. Um, he later became a coach. He coached at Boys Town for a number of years. He's now been inducted to the Nebraska Wrestling Hall of Fame because he coached there as well. And so getting to do something for him, he was like a kid in a candy store when he got to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Yeah. And that will always be one of my most memorable dreams. And I think it was just because it was the first one I was truly able to be a part of. So how about you, Josh? I think the one we just talked about um, where we sent the amazing couple down to Key Largo, Florida. I was able to greet them at the airport to get them checked in for the first time ever flying. And then when they actually got home, mm -hmm. we organized a welcome home party with their local church. So we had little welcome home signs and they rolled up in their limo and they were just so excited to see everybody once they got home to tell them all about their experiences that they had. Yeah. And again, you're doing these for individuals that, you know, like you said, have a terminal illness or there, there's a chronic illness or something that's going on um, with them or their family that you know, they, they could never do this. They could never Ever mm -hmm. so. I think, I think it, we focus on um, I, what we hear people tell us is that they're, they're in a time of their life where they are labeled by their diagnosis. So they are the cancer patient. They are the renal patient. Everything that they talk about with their family and friends is about their diagnosis or their disease. Everything they talk about with their healthcare providers is about their diagnosis. And so Dreamweaver kind of swoops in and we say, you know, we say, who are you as a person and what do you yeah. want to do? And the diagnosis for a very short period of time goes away and we're able to really focus yeah. on the individual and their identity and the things that are truly important and fill their own buckets, kind of make them happy for it. Even if it's just a short reprieve, it provides, you know, that sense of joy and peace for, for seniors. Absolutely. All right. So how has Dreamweaver maintained its mission through COVID-19? Yeah. A question I'm asking all the nonprofits. Sure, right? And we're still going through it, I guess. Um, so Dreamweaver, yeah. in the sense that we we serve seniors, right? So we just covered all of that. So seniors, I think along, along with young kids, seniors were the population that was truly has been most impacted by COVID. So we've all seen 
Uh, you know, we lost access not only to seniors, but to experiences, right? There's restaurants closed, concerts, no concerts, no outdoor activities, everything was shut down. So um, we really had to sit down and say, okay, here's a population that's truly suffering through this and truly being impacted. How do we continue to serve them? Um, and we've all seen those terrible images of families um, standing yeah, yeah. outside of nursing home windows. Like yeah. uh, it's heartbreaking to see that. And when you talk with the facilities and with the staff members in the facilities, you know, seniors were just doing their best to try to connect. They couldn't hear through the windows. You couldn't open the windows. They couldn't connect. They couldn't touch. They couldn't feel. It was incredibly frustrating for not only the seniors, but for the staff members that were trying to make that happen. And so Dreamweaver really saw an opportunity. And we, we kind of felt like something as simple as technology could help eliminate this type of barrier. Um, and so in June, no, July, July of last year, we launched our Connecting Hope program. And the whole purpose of the program is to get a technological device into the hands of seniors so that they can connect virtually with family, friends, and loved ones. Um, we ended up delivering over 500 tablets by the end of the year last year and found such a huge success that we kind of have adopted the program permanently. Um, and now are continuing to serve Nebraskans and, and Iowans through this program. And so we've partnered with GrandPad. Um, they're a device, they're a tablet that's made just for seniors. So there's larger buttons, larger screen. It has two front facing speakers so that seniors can hear. Um, but that not only can they connect virtually, but GrandPad actually has like curated a ton of content that is really senior focused. So there's music and uh, movies and games and uh, they have like a moods app that just plays quiet noise um, so that if yeah. you're sitting alone you know some of that sort of stuff and so we've really found a lot of success um, with this with this tablet and something so little and so simple bringing so much joy uh, to seniors yeah and and that's a perfect example of the chaos and all the mayhem and challenges of COVID-19 were this came out of this. I mean, this, yeah. this may not have been, you know, you might not have ever looked at this. And now um, seniors here in Nebraska, Iowa, and they can connect with family members that are living in Texas or Florida. I mean, um, I, I, th th this is just, I love the, the stories that come out as like, you mm -hmm. know what, we had to really think outside of the box and this is what came from that. So yeah, absolutely. And it's really been just a, it's been a success for us. Um, and I think just a success for, for Nebraska in general and um, an opportunity to remove that technology barrier with yes. seniors yep. and families. And so it, it's, it's been kind of fun. It's fun to watch a senior get a tablet and play with it for the first time. And, um, and I, I, I test drove it on my own grandma um, and she's addicted to it. So uh, <laughs> she wouldn't put it down. So there, it's kind of fun to watch that and just watch them engage in a new way. Absolutely. Okay. So let's, let's um, talk about your, the big event coming up. In yeah. September. Absolutely. We have our fundraising event of the year. It's called Boots and Buckets. Um, it's our fourth year having Boots and yeah. Buckets and we're super excited. Last year, of course, we had to have it virtually and this year it's going to be in person. Yeah, uh, we can't, we can't wait. So we started Boots and Buckets in 2018. Um, really is kind of that annual fundraising and it's a casual event for us. We encourage people to wear casual wear, their favorite style boots and come help us raise the spirits of seniors by fulfilling their bucket list wishes. And I so it. uh, it's a big event. It's at a view West Shores. So it's at the yeah. new a view West Shores this year. Um, so we're expecting a large crowd um, and, and really like I said, the night for us is, is all about fun. And we have, we have some amazing auction items up for grab, some amazing live auction items up for grab. Um, and we're really looking forward to a really fun evening. So what's the, tell me the date again. Yeah. It's Thursday, September 16th. Okay. Um, it'll be from 5.30 and it ends around, right around 8.30. Yeah. So the idea for us is that it's, you're there, you're in, it's quick and you're home in time to put your kids to bed. <laughs> so so that was for work the next day. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. when you can Absolutely. get up and get back to work and get going. And so, uh, yeah, it's 5.30 of you West Shores on September 16th. Um, at, the easiest way to, to register to find more information about that is to go to our website, which is dreamweaver.org. And, and I 
plug in because we only have a few tables left to yeah. sell. So if you want to be a part of the event or be a, night, a part of the evening of fun, uh, act fast. If you're not able to come to the event, um, anybody can. Our silent auction will go live the day after Labor Day, and that's okay. virtual. So that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there's still going to be a little part where people can still get plugged in, even if they're not able to make it to our event, even though we're going to have a huge crowd there, which we're so excited for. But yeah. Mm -hmm. So people can can start bidding on silent auction items right after Labor Day up until mm -hmm. up until the event day itself. Yes. Yep. Okay. So that it'll open up on the 7th of September and it will go till seven o'clock p.m. the night of September 16th. And that link, we'll be sharing that on all of our social platforms. So we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, yep. YouTube. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be sharing that link on all of our platforms and it will be available on our website as well. Okay. Well, Sherry, Josh, I just want to thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I love what your organization does. It, it helps so many um, individuals and also their families as well. So mm -hmm. it, it's- well, thank you. It's such a gift. We appreciate you taking the time to speak with us and helping us spread word about our mission. Uh, it's so important. You know, we do, we're a nonprofit, so we, yep. we rely on people knowing about who we are, and we appreciate you being such an active part of spreading the word about that. Absolutely. Well, again, thank you both so much, and um, hope to hope to see you on I September sixteenth. So absolutely. absolutely. Well, we'll be sharing pictures either way. <laughs> All right. Okay. Take <laughs> Thanks, care. Andy. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, be sure to visit spiritofomaha.com for all your nonprofit and philanthropic news. Um, and then join us back here next week.